and welcome. I'm Kushbu and you're watching Health Mantra. Today here with us we have Dr. Rohan Barve from Manipal Hospitals. Dr. Rohan is a consultant in medical gastroenterology. Doctor, thank you so much for accepting our invitation and taking the time to come here. Yeah, thanks. Let's start off today's show with a very important topic. Something that just goes unnoticed or maybe ignored. Because of course we diagnose ourselves. Maybe I ate something a little less. Maybe I something I ate something a little more. Maybe I need to eat a banana. Yes, we're talking about digestive disorders. Yes, constipation it is. So let's get to know a little more from Dr. Burpe. Yes. So constipation uh, mainly is defined by two things. One is stool consistency and another is stool frequency. So when the person is passing stools less than three times a week that is called as constipation. The consistency wise usually the person by the patient is they feel that motions are very hard, they need a straining to pass the stools. Sometimes they feel there is a blockage when the stools are coming out. In very extreme cases they need to put a finger to remove the stools. We call it as a manual evacuation. And the last some patients feel non-specific symptoms like bloating, excessive flatulence. So these all symptoms come under the constipation. And doctor, is there any particular age group or the kind of people that are affected by this? Yeah, so mainly the elderly people are affected by constipation. So one of the reason is as the age grows, the peristalsis, that is the movement of food or stool in the intestine becomes slow. That's why it becomes more harder, the stools become more harder and dehydrated and they suffer with constipation. Another is the females, specifically pregnant female and postpartum female, they suffer with constipation. Again, the reason being dehydration and some hormonal changes which precipitate these symptoms. Also, doctor, are there any specific types, any particular types of constipation? Yeah, so constipation, there are various reasons. Basically, broadly, we classify into two groups. One which is called as functional constipation and second under organic diseases. Functional means what? There are no diseases inside, but being, as I said, the colonic motility is affected by different reasons, that's why patients are suffering with constipation. So almost 80% of the patients are having this functional constipation. While organic, there are various reasons, like there is the disease present in the colon or other metabolic causes because of which they suffer. So in organic, we divide into four types. One we call it when the disease is in the colon, like somebody is having colonic stricture. Stricture means narrowing. In that narrowing case, stool cannot come out. Because of this narrowest part, the stools gets accumulated above that obstruction. This is called as colonic strictures. The reasons could be Crohn's disease, tuberculosis. This causes this colonic strictures. Second is colonic tumors. As we know, malignancy. With the malignancy, this growth blocks the passage of the stool while they are coming out through the colon. Third, the colonic diseases we call when they are affecting the rectum. Rectum is nothing but the last part of our large intestine. So when there is a formation of ulcer, we call it as a solitary rectal ulcer syndrome or proctitis. This leads to the constipation. So these are some of the colonic diseases. As I said, other causes are like metabolic syndromes. As we all know diabetes, so diabetes people uh, suffer with constipation. Basically, when diabetes people, when their sugars are uncontrolled, they affect the nerves. The nerves are connecting brain to our intestines. Because of that, the again intestinal motility becomes slow. So one is diabetes, second we call it as a thyroid, hypothyroid patients. Those on where thyroid hormone levels are low, functional thyroid hormones, we call it as a hypothyroidism. Because of this, again the colonic motility becomes slow. Third we say hypercalcemia, there are various reasons when the calcium levels in your body increases, it can lead to the constipation. The fourth, as I said, this is the metabolic causes, one is colonic diseases. Third is neurological causes. Those patients who are suffering with spinal cord diseases, there are various reasons. Again, the colonic motility slows down. Some diseases are called as Parkinsonism, which comes with the age and these are the degenerative disorders. In this case, patients again, because of slow, slowing this movement of the peristalsis, the stools becomes more dehydrated and hard and they suffer with constipation. So these are various reasons basically in organic causes leading to constipation. As I said functional, functional is which we see more commonly. Out of that functional there are three main types are there. One we call it as a normal transit. As I was stressing more on the speed or motility of the large intestine. 
in normal transit the speed is normal still patients suffer with constipation these fall more in commonly in a group called as irritable bowel syndrome so these patients are having predominant constipation as a symptom along with that they have some abdominal pain and bloating and flatulence another is slow transit this is slow transit constipation is seen in which there are some myopathic or neuropathic disorders where the uh, there is no organic disease but still the motility of the colon is slow and third we said defecatory disorder so if you see the constipation one is stool has to travel from the large intestine till the last part so once the stool is in our last part of our colon we get the urge to pass the stool and then there is a process called as defecation by which the stool comes out of our body so the defecation process is affected in some people so the stool travels with normal speed it reaches the rectum it gets accumulated the patient gets the urge but still they are not able to uh, defecate out in that case the defecation process is affected it is called as defecatory disorders so there are different causes of constipation usually the people see that ki the constipation is the same thing but as i told you with so many reasons and so many types the treatment investigation and other all parameters changes so one should know that there are different types like your constipation and other patients constipation will not be the same so same treatment will not be applicable to both of you so first we need to know the exact reason we need to classify it and then we need to start the treatment in such so a patient so for that doctor are there any investigations available and also how do i know i have to like if i need that investigation yes so as i said functional constipation is the most common reason not all the patients required the investigations when the patient comes with the constipation basically chronic constipation which we are talking about so there are two types one is chronic and acute acute constipation is when the patient is suffering with these symptoms for a shorter duration in that case suppose some patient is having more dehydrated they had more vomitings they are not able to drink the proper water mainly in summer seasons we see lot of people are dehydrated they get constipation when they correct these factors like hydration drinking more water having more fibers this constipation gets corrected they don't require any evaluation but those who are suffering with chronic constipation having this symptoms for more than a months and years they should consult the doctor when the these kind of patients come to us not all the patients require investigations or any test by clinically taking the history we type them in which class they are uh, symptoms are or which is the type of constipation and accordingly we suggest specifically those who are having alarming symptoms like the patients who are having weight loss they are passing some blood in the stools those who are elderly age more than 45 years those who are having altered bowel habits and those who are requiring ma manual evacuation definitely these patients require investigations the investigations are two types one we usually do called as blood test where we try to see out the metabolic factors as i said sugar levels for diabetes some kidney patients can have constipation to rule out kidney disorders thyroid as i mentioned so these are called as blood test another is basically imaging to see there is nothing in the colon which is obstructing the passage of the stool okay so doctor talk about investigations is thinking what exactly is colonoscopy since it's spoken a lot about especially when it comes to digestive issues yes. so colonoscopy is the test where the endoscope endoscope is nothing but a tube having camera in front it is passed through the anus and we see whole of the large intestine with the camera we record whole that process and we take all the images of the colonic parts so in the colon there are different parts last part we call it as a cecum then there is a ascending colon then transverse colon then descending colon and then sigmoid and finally rectum so we see whole of the colon this process before colonoscopy we give some preparation to the patient by which they pass the stool and their colon gets emptied then next day we plan for this procedure so that if any diseases there inside we can get it done this is simple opd based procedure it takes hardly 15 to 20 minutes for patients comfort sometimes we do it under anesthesia so the patient will not feel any pain and same day patient goes after 2 hours back to the home so it's a very simple procedure and it's very effective uh, the one important factor about intestinal diseases right from our esophagus that is food pipe till our anus whole gi tract is like a elastic tube okay 
in simple language and it is closed one it's not open one so when the food comes it opens by 2 cm and again it closes this is called as peristalsis and it is happening right from our food pipe till our anus so whenever we do any test this food pipe and large small intestine large intestine are closed so some diseases can be missed because if some diseases are inside the lumen they cannot be seen by the imaging imaging i am talking about ct scan or your ultrasound so when we do the colonoscopy or endoscopies we insert air to distend them properly so even if any disease in early stage we can detect it so colonoscopy is more effective than ct scan to detect these colonic diseases like efficacy wise if we talk it's more than 95% effective and if you compare to the imaging like even the ct scan mri there are hardly 70 to 80% effective so those who are having alarming symptoms with constipation definitely we suggest them go ahead first with the colonoscopy that is the first important uh, investigation required in that case uh, but doctor is there any limitation to this as in in terms of age in terms of any other health issues wherein you cannot exactly undergo colonoscopy no so colonoscopy can be done right from the infant till the old age group there is no exact contraindication some patients where uh, the colonic strictures are there or where we cannot pass the colonoscope throughout the colon because of the disease itself then we cannot screen the rest of the colon like some patients have malignancy because of malignancy they get a stricture that is narrowing in the colon in that part we can see the part of the colonic mucosa till the malignancy but we can't see beyond that because we can't pass the scope in that case this area is screened by colonoscopy we take the biopsies from the malignancy and the rest of the part is screened by ct scan or something so in such a cases only we can't see whole colon but we can do the colonoscopy in each and every patient only thing is there are some indications called as elective like as i said constipation while emergency indications when person is bleeding through the stools these are emergency in emergency situation every patient we can take up for colonoscopy elective cases we try to avoid in pregnant female mainly in the last trimester or first trimester so that they should not stimulate the uterine contractions and some patients where we see the patient is not fit in that case we try to avoid elective procedures like elective colonoscopy but emergency definitely yes we can go ahead with other patients also one point i want to add in colonoscopy during constipation most common finding which we see is called as colonic polyps these polyps are nothing but these are growths from the colonic mucosa so some mucosa becomes hyperactive and it grows more compared to rest of the mucosa that is detected by colonoscopy and the most important part is we can remove that colonic polyp during the same procedure no need of any surgery so endoscopically we can remove that polyps and these polyps are nothing but the early stage of colonic cancers okay. so this is very important point okay doctor and can this condition lead to any other major health issues in terms yes as i said the constipation can be the first symptom of colonic cancer so this is a major disease so when somebody is having uh, constipation for more than 6 months with weight loss sometimes passing blood in the stool sometimes mucus definitely they should go ahead with the colonoscopy or required investigations because this could be the one of the symptom for colonic cancer second thing because of this constipation and constant straining patient develop local complications local means at the last part of the rectum and anus something called as anal fissure everybody might have heard of fissure is nothing but there is a wound in the anal canal it forms because when the hard stool is coming out it causes friction while coming out of the anal canal that friction causes wound in the anal canal this wound is nothing but we call it as a anal fissure that time patient presents to us as having a pain while passing the stool sometimes there is a bleeding and this pain is very acute this is called as fissure second complication as we all know is called as piles or hemorrhoids these are nothing but the blood vessels which lose their tone again the reason being the constipation this constipated patients tries to while evacuating the stool they strain too much and this repeated straining causes the prolapse of these blood vessels out of the anal canal leading to called as piles and third some patients develop fistula or anal abscess so when they do this straining there are small small anal glands these are nothing but the glands in our anal canal 
they get blocked because of this constipation and repeated straining and later on they get infected after infection they form a tract and the pus starts coming out near to your anus is called as fistula so this perianal abscess fistula fissure pies these are nothing but the complications of constipation and sometimes they are very serious they might require surgical intervention if not detected in early stage so doctor what treatment or prevention would you recommend for such patients yeah so treatment wise there are a lot of medicines are available but first i'll tell you the first most important is lifestyle modification and that one thing comes is a diet so in diet everybody's diet should contain every day minimum 25 grams of fiber these fibers are important because they accumulate more water in your stool make it softer and easy for the passage 25 gram of fiber means if you eat one banana it contains 3.5 gram of fiber if you eat one ball of oats it contains 4.5 gram so 25 gram is easily achievable so those food containing more fiber should be added in your diet like we say green salad green leafy vegetables peas banana oats there's lot of stuff should be there second try to avoid fatty meals this fatty meals reduces the uh, speed with which the stools are coming out the stool more they stay in the colon they get more dehydrated the so speed is more important this peristalsis is more important so high fatty meals means contains those containing more red meat more deep fried items junk foods this should be avoided they causes more constipation third important factor exercise is required those who are having sedentary lifestyle they suffer more with the constipation so every day we recommend 30 to 45 minutes exercise should be there it could be walking jogging or even running but minimum 30 to 45 days should be there this again affects your peristalsis fourth important factor these are we call it as a lifestyle measures fourth something called as toileting habit what we recommend you should go to the toilet early in the morning some people have the faulty toileting like they go three times a day or more in the night they should go early in the morning scientifically at that time you have maximum urge and there is a chance you will have complete defecation or complete evacuation of your stools in the morning so try to see that you are going early in the morning after brushing your teeth having two glass of water you will have maximum urge now coming to the medicines first we always suggest this lifestyle measures to the patient even after that if patient are not having improvement we suggest the medicines there are lot of medicines are available which we call it as a laxatives there are osmotic laxative prokinetics depends on the type of the constipation we suggest the medicine and the lastly in some patients where these all things are not effective they are specifically in a subgroup called as defecatory disorder which was trying to tell you during the type of constipation so this is the subgroup of patient which are uh, they have lot of psychological uh, effect because of constipation because none of the medicines work in their case so they are suffering with this constipation for years and their main symptoms are stools are coming till the rectum but they are not coming out so they have constant urge of defecation but they are not able to evacuate the stools and none of the medicines work in that case in the in these the therapy is called as something called as where they put a screen in front we call it as a biofeedback therapy so there is something called as anorectal manometry so there is one probe which is passed into the anus and patient has been taught about how the defecatory process happens and on the screen they are made to coordinate the movement so when the defecation happens there is something called as rectum should contract and your anal opening should relax then the motions will come out so this is being taught to defecatory or patient suffering with defecatory disorder and this is the only treatment available for these kind of patients this is called as defecatory disorder so we see lot of patients who get frustrated none of the medicines are working few patients i have seen in my practice they have attempted suicide because of only constipation so it goes to that extreme this patient should get investigated and if we typify them properly the treatment is available and they get rid of their symptoms so the treatment depends on the type of constipation as i said and most important lifestyle modification these two factors can cover up the s- symptoms of the constipation one more thing doctor like you mentioned the blood in stool during constipation is it a sign of colon cancer 
Yes, the blood in the stool is one of the alarming symptoms. Those patients who are suffering with this constipation for more than a six months with other alarming symptoms as weight loss, then they have anorexia, and then they have persistent blood in the stool. These are uh, definitely signs of colon cancer. But one of the misconception is that or people always think once the blood is there in the stool, it's colon cancer. It's not always. So there are other reasons also. So some patients who are suffering with constipation, they develop fissure in ano, like fissure, uh, the wound in the anal canal. They can also get this blood in the stool. Second, those who are suffering with piles. This is again piles comes with constipation. They can also develop blood in the stool. So the presence of blood in your stool doesn't indicate it is a cancer. There are other reasons also. But definitely this patient should consult the doctor and get the proper advice. So when you are suffering from constipation, when would you recommend that a patient actually goes in for a colonoscopy or consults a doctor in terms of colon cancer? Yeah, so colon cancer, uh, colonoscopy is the method to detect it in early stage. So it is used as a screening tool. So if you go to the US and UK, their national guidelines suggest after the age of 40, whole population of the country undergoes colonoscopy. I'm not talking about the patient, I'm talking about the whole population. And after that, every 10 years, this is not feasible in our country. So in our country, those patients who are having age more than 40 years and those who are having chronic constipation, they should undergo colonoscopy at least once. So that if there are early changes of colon cancer, we can detect them in early stage. And there are a lot of treatments available now, which are the curative treatments. So those who with the age more than 40 and with chronic constipation, they should undergo colonoscopy. Thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. Thank you for taking all the time out, coming here and sharing your knowledge. Yes, thank you. For those of us who still have some queries, some fears, we can always consult Dr. Rohan at Manipal Hospitals from Monday to Saturday. Let's conclude today's episode with a promise to eat healthy, drink sufficient water, exercise daily and stay healthy. See you again soon with another expert. Until then, stay tuned.